How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Midwest Outdoors, the show where we talk about anything we want to talk about when it comes to fishing. I'm your host, Dennis LaPelle, and I am jacked up. I'm so excited. Fishing season is here. States where we've had regulations in place that have been keeping us at home, well, because of reasons, uh, they're starting to be lifted. Other states where you know we actually have a, a, a real fishing opener, those are actually happening, and we're all getting excited to get back out on the water. Uh, and I've been wondering to myself, why? Why are we so excited? What what gets us so motivated to get out there on that very first week and that very first opportunity that we can? And it's kind of hit me. It's because we have these these moments, these these situations, these these stories, these fish tales, if you will, of, of great times that we've had on the water or these memorable fish that we've caught in the situation that uh, surrounds it. I have a bunch of fish stories. I'm sure you have a bunch of fish stories as well. And so I decided to call a few of my buddies up to find out you know, some of their stories, some of their fish tales that keep them driven, to get back out on the water time in and time out. We're joined now by Midwest Outdoors, very own Larry Ladowski. Larry, how you doing these days? I'm doing all right, Dennis. So, Larry, today we are talking about uh, great fishing memories that we have, those fish that just kind of stick in the back of your head or even in the front of your head, the ones that get you excited to go out for the next, uh, the next trip. Everybody's got, you know, fish that just are always with them. I, I know over the years you've had some incredible moments with all your travels, all the destinations you go to. You've got to have a couple fishing stories that are just stellar. Dennis, 20 to 25 years of doing this, there are tons of places that I've fished and so many stories that I'd love to tell. But one in particular that I can remember is I was fishing with a buddy of mine, Billy McDonald, and I can't remember the lake we were on, um, somewhere down south, and we were bass fishing. And all of a sudden, I hook into this bass. And I like throwing lipless crankbaits. I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, particular for any one in particular, I guess. Um, I'll fish you know, Berkeley's war pigs. I'll fish uh, red eyed shads from Strike King. Always I like a popular those, one. I like your Zuri's rattling vibes, and mm -hmm. they've been a staple for a lot of bass fishermen for a long time. But I'm a, I'm a lipless crankbait guy, and we were fishing lipless crankbaits, and I can't remember which brand I was using, but I hooked into this bass, and I'm bringing it into the, to the boat, and I'm fishing with Billy, and we're filming for the TV show. And Billy goes, Hey, Larry, you want me to land this fish for you? And I go, Sure, Bill. He reaches over, grabs the fish, and we start talking about the fish that we just caught. And I set my rod down, and all of a sudden, the rod almost jumps out of the boat, and I got another fish on it. It's fallen into the water. I grab the rod, and I'm not sure if I'm holding the fish or not, but I grab the rod, and I set the hook, and I caught two fish on the same lure. Just It was amazing. That's incredible. Uh, Larry, you know what? I, I think I know the segment you're talking about, and uh, here, let I brought it up here real quick. Let's take a look and see how accurate your memory is to uh, uh, to what the actual there, days Larry? of events. You got a good one, Bill. <laughs> Man, he wants nothing about this boat. Oh, yes. Open, wide open for you. Yeah, that's got a mouthful of hooks there. I'll just grab him like that. That's a little safer. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> and they're stuck right in that hard part in the lip. I thought, man, as soon as I saw him jump, I thought, ah, there's going to be another one gone. It's amazing how a fish like that can spit a hook that, that oh, yeah. quickly. Oh, yeah, and you can't touch it without oh, another one. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> Holy smokes, Bill. <laughs> I set my rod down. The lure was hanging over the side of the boat. This the fish out. came right up off. and smacked it. That's a first for me. Wow. And this thing's a monster. Unbelievable. I would here, never, have you ever seen that? That's the first time. <laughs> Small <laughs> mouth, maybe, but large mouth, no. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Let's see. yeah. Got him. I will if you look at mouth. There he goes. Yeah! Look at that. <laughs> back to backers. <laughs> Don't get this. This is what I did. This is what I did. I put the rod down, he unhooked it, he threw it back in, and that thing just hit. Smoked it. Oh, Tell anyway, get this lure. Everything oh, comes yeah, at a price. Right we can work something out, I promise you. There you go. <laughs> well, let's see if we can do it again. There we go. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Watch that rod. <laughs> wow, Larry, that was absolutely incredible. Were those like two five pounders? I don't think they were necessarily five pounder, but quality fish no matter where you are. And, you know, the fun too is it's not only catching the fish, but it's also enjoying a boat with my friend Billy McDonald, and he's a professional bass fishing guy. And yeah, he's the first like a time great guy. he's ever seen. 
first time he's ever seen something like that with all the fishing that he's done in his career. That was absolutely amazing. And I could see why a, a moment like that would just get you fired up to get back out on the boat the very next day or the very next week and, uh, and try to replicate that and do it again. You're right. So now a, a lot of the states in the Midwest now, they're having their fishing uh, openers. Wisconsin's uh, right now, uh, Minnesota's is coming up. Uh, you know, everybody's jacked up, excited to get out. What are you going to be uh, looking at throwing the uh, next time you're out here? Well, you know, being a lipless crankbait guy, I'm really excited about Yozuri's new bait. It's uh, they have the rattle and vibe, which is a staple and has been for bass fishermen a long time. But well, they just came tiny. out with a new rattle and vibe mini. It's an inch and five eighths long, three sixteenths of an ounce. And the nice thing about this, they've got a lot of great colors, but the nice thing about this is it's not only a bass lure, this will catch crappie, bluegill, walleye, perch, you name it. It's an all encompassing lure. So, you know, the ponds that I'm fishing, or if I want to get out early and do a little bit of a, a you know, gear setup, that's a perfect bait of choice for me. So I'm looking forward to getting out there on the water and trying that out. That bait looks just absolutely tasty like a perfect morsel size especially uh you know the water is going to be really cold right now so uh you know metabolic rate is going to be uh pretty low on these fish they're going to want to feed but they're not going to want to put in a lot of effort and something like that's going to come in front of them i can just see them slurping it right up i hope so i'll let you know how it goes <laughs> <laughs> you do that uh thanks for joining us uh larry that's a heck of a fishing story and uh we're looking forward to seeing more of your adventures out there uh how can people uh I'll follow you and uh, keep up on what you're doing. Well, they go, go check us out on YouTube. Go into Midwest Outdoors. You can see all the segments that we've filmed recently. Or you can also go to Facebook, sign up on Facebook, and I'm sure we'll have some posts there as well. Fantastic. Uh, thanks again, Larry, for joining us. Our next guest is the host of two wildly popular television shows. He's been inducted into the North Dakota Hall of Fame, May Midwest Outdoors Magazine contributor, and my good friend, Jason Mitchell. Jason, how are you doing today? How's everything hey. in the, uh, the lockdown days? <laughs> Great. We're doing a lot of fishing. I think a lot of people are fishing, which is good. You know, I mean, I don't know if it's just the flexibility of people's schedules or just people just are always looking for something to do. And you know what? I, I've been telling people fishing's the best pill there is for COVID-19 as far as I'm concerned so just oh. getting outdoors and enjoying yourself and so Absolutely. it's good to see I mean, we've been fishing a lot and you know we've been trying to be sensitive to it we've been staying close to home you know and just you know fishing with basically a skeleton crew myself maybe one cameraman maybe my son and you know we've been you know staying away from hotels and things like that or you know cooking our own food and doing that kind of thing but uh yeah I mean a lot of people are fishing and that's what we've been doing well fantastic well Jason you know uh with everybody staying at home, it's given us a lot of time to think and getting people very, very excited to get back out on the water. And one thing that's been driving us and it's been in the back of my head is these stories that we have of, of days on the boat or a particular fish that we caught that just gets us fired up to go out and do it again. And I know you have got to have some incredible fishing stories from your storied career. Oh, I mean, there's been a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, and, and some of my best memories were, you know, stories, you know, when I was guiding, you know, where, you know, maybe I had somebody that maybe had never caught a big fish or maybe it was such a weird thing. Like, you know, when you're, when you're fish a lot and you fish every day, you just see weird things that you don't expect to see. I remember one time uh, I took this guy out and I'd guide him quite a few times over the years, a gentleman from Grand Forks. And I think it was him and a couple of his kids or maybe his son and girlfriend or whatever. And I remember one time, you know, it doesn't always work out this way because I've had plenty of I mean, I've had, I've tried a lot of things that didn't work in my life, but uh, I remember, you know, we put the anchor in and as soon as we dropped down, I mean, it was just like a fish instantly, kind of a deal where you close your bail. Oh, I got one. And everybody's like looking at me like I'm the greatest guy ever. <laughs> in some days it works out that way. And I remember uh, one time, you know, this guy was uh, fighting this pretty large walleye and it got it right up to the boat and then the fish got off and then the fish oh, no. sunk down about five feet below the boat and we could see it he dropped his jig back down and it fit again. You know, I mean, just weird, crazy. I mean, that's the wow. kind of stuff you don't. Or I remember another time, you know, I had a guy in the boat casting and uh, he hooked up with a pike. And he's fighting this pike and all of a sudden the other guy hooks up with a fish too. I think, okay, we've got a double. Mm -hmm. I knew that they were both pike by the, you know, the runs and stuff. 
and here they had the same fish that <laughs> was fighting, you know, pulling out drag and hit the other lure as it's right. you know getting real bit. I mean, you know, well, just, it, yes, you're from rodeo country. Stuff. You're from rodeo <laughs> country. We call that head and tailing. Yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, you know, there's a lot of neat stuff that comes up. But I mean, it's uh, it's cool when you know things happen that uh, you know you don't expect, or or it's kind of a deal where you, if you didn't see it, you wouldn't believe it. You know. Well, it, it, stuff like that. It's memories like that that have you sitting where you're at right now. You look like you're in your vehicle sitting at a boat ramp. I am. I'm waiting for the rain. I thought, well, I'll get this done with you, and then I'm hoping by that time the rain passes through and uh, and uh, head out fishing. So exactly, because you know, otherwise you probably just look outside. Oh, it's raining today. I'm not going to go out. But you, we've got these great moments that drive us to go and do it again. Absolutely. You know, and uh, here's something I can tell you is that, I mean, I don't have all the answers. I've tried a lot of things that haven't worked. I've tried a lot of spots that I probably won't go back to for a while. You know, I mean, I've, I've spent a lot of time that was unproductive, you know, as far as catching fish or, you know, hunting or fishing, right? But, you know, there's the old saying, you can't, you, you, you'll never be successful if you're sitting on the couch. And I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many times where I went out and I thought it was going to be a great day. I mean, everything was lining up. Wind was perfect direction. This was perfect. That was perfect. And uh, maybe you get out to where you caught so many fish the day before and there's four boats sitting right there. Like, where did these people come from? They weren't here right. yesterday. You know, and uh, or things just unfold during the day where, you know, you think it's going to be a great day and it ends up not being such a great day. You know, where, you know, things change or you wear out your welcome on a spot. And there's so many times where you go out and you – don't think it's going to be very good, but you go out anyways, and it ends up being phenomenal. You know, I can't tell you how many times where I sat in a tree thinking, well, I don't think tonight's going to be a good night. It's too windy. It's too this. It's too that. It's too hot, whatever it is. And, you know, you can talk yourself out of a lot of things, but ultimately I can't tell you how many times where, you know, I, you know, I had successful where, I, you know, an hour or two earlier, if you would have asked me if you think today's going to end up being good or successful, in that regard, you know, I would have said no. And, and you know, so at the end of the day, you know, anytime you can get out success, you know, anytime you can put a boat water, you can climb up into a tree, that's a good day. And so don't talk yourself out of going, you know, go every chance you can go whenever you can. Cause even if you, you know, if, if nothing else, you learn stuff, you know, you'll figure out a nuance on a spot, you'll figure out something, you'll look at something in a different way, you know, uh, even like scouting for deer, you know, I'm a fanatical bow hunter and uh, you know, I mean, I learned something every time, you know, as far as, mm -hmm. just, you know, and, and sometimes you don't even know what you learned yet because sometimes some lessons are hard or sometimes we're just stubborn and we refuse to see something a certain way. And then after two or three times, it kind of finally clicks. Like it maybe it might be something as simple as I'm sitting in the wrong spot if I want to see these deer with my spotting scope. Duh, they're doing this over here. <laughs> you drive right. over a mile and you come up on a different hill and look, you know, whatever it is. But, you know, if there's only – one way to learn and that's just to put in the time you know and i enjoy putting in the time that's the best part of you it. certainly do you're, you're one of the the hardest working anglers i've seen out on the water and uh and just watching you do what you do i've learned a whole lot well <laughs> i've done a lot of things wrong i mean and i'm still learning and, and it's funny you know you learn a lesson and you think boy you know uh, you know this is something good to know then you know things change or things happen all of a sudden you sometimes you relearn the same lesson five years later you know mm -hmm. and uh, you're never going to be right all the time you're never going to be perfect um you know i just try to be fundamentally sound so that way if when i do get opportunities i take advantage of them and uh try to get myself out of rut sooner because there's times where you get into a rut you know, where you're, you're going down the wrong track so to speak and um but also realize too you're going to make plenty of mistakes you know especially like with great fishing right you got to try maybe a lot of lakes, for example, to try to find those hidden gems that are, that are so productive. You know, basically you got to try to find things that other people have overlooked or haven't stumbled into, you know, it used to be where you have to think like a fish and now you have to think like other fishermen too, or other fish or women. That's a really good try point. To yeah. Figure out the nuances as far as whether it's a small lake that's doesn't have a boat ramp. that's really obscure. that has no lake map. that has no stocking report. And you might check 10 of those and realize, okay, now I don't, I, now I know why I've never seen even a kayak on this lake. There's no fish in it. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you had to, you had to spend time to figure that out. And so. Oh, absolutely. I spent all day you know, yesterday uh, checking out water. I've never fished before. Um, we had a recent rain uh, where I, uh, where I live. And, and one of the best ways to, uh, 
to scout water out here um, in these suburb ponds is after a rain, you go and check out the culverts where the water's running in and the fish will usually stack yeah. up on that incoming water. I spent all, uh, all afternoon yesterday checking about 15 ponds that have been kind of on my list that I need to go mark out. And I, I found a handful that, uh, that look like they have good potential to go back to. And I found a bunch that had absolutely nothing in them. And yeah, it was absolutely. really easy to do, but you got to put in the time. Yep. And so, you know, don't be afraid of failing, I guess, because if you're afraid of, of not having success, you'll never try those things. You'll just go back to what you know. You'll go mm-hmm. back to the same spot where you've had some sex, some success before. And, uh, you know, you have to take some chances too. you know, uh, whether it's hunting or fishing, you have to try a few things maybe that are unorthodox. You have to put in some time trying some things you've never seen anybody else do. And, um, you know, and some, some of that time is going to be, is going to feel like it's wasted, you know, because you're not going to, you know, have the, that success, but you have to have that mentality, I think, in order to, you know, experience some of the greatest success, you know, you well, see it with, uh, even with tournament fishing, you know, the people that zig when everybody's eggs, the one right. person that will go up shallow when everybody is convinced that the fish are deep or vice versa, you know, uh, just doing something different, you know. Well, Speaking of doing something different, what are you going to be doing out on the water today? You know, I'm just going to look around at water temperature. The water's come up a little bit. And so I, I'm basically just kind of looking at spots. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm just going to pitch some jigs and plastics to uh, cover water. If somebody were to put a gun to my head right now, I'd be slip bobbering with leeches. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, but uh, leeches are hard to find right now. I mean, I'd, right. I'd have to order them in from Minnesota. I know none of the bait shops here have them yet. But, uh, uh you know, just jigging plastic, but I just want to see how some of these spots have changed. And I just want to see, um, for example, early in the year on Devil's Lake, if you have a little bit of a bump in water, like the last few years, we've had dropping water where the water hasn't really come mm-hmm. up much. This year, the water's coming up a little bit. And whenever you have water that kind of overtakes and comes over a saddle and fills up a slough behind it, it might be six inches to get into this spot. But then once right. you get over that saddle, you know, it's basically like when, if you can imagine Devil's Lake comes up to a point where floods into a new slough into another pond or another smaller lake it might be in five acres it might be 500 acres you know but mm-hmm. when, when it floods into that new water even if it's you know six inches or a foot to get into it you know you're lifting your motor sometimes and trying to figure out how to navigate into it then it drops back into say six seven eight feet in that bowl you know it, usually that it's protected the water's you know five degrees warmer than the rest of the lake and and those walleyes, those big walleyes really suck up into those spots. Uh, I remember one really of the near. best big fish days I ever had on Devil's Lake was right after Penny uh, had uh, had flooded over. And we actually had to push oh, yeah. the boat into that yeah. slough. And it was it was a slaughter. It was it was yeah. absolutely incredible. I, I never put that many big fish in my boat uh, uh, in Devil's in, ever since. It was incredible. Yeah. No, it's funny how those fish just get sucked into those spots. And so I'm just going to go out and just see what some of that stuff looks like. It's You're going to go out my, and find yeah, a new my, fishing story. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. thank you, Jason Mitchell. How do people find you uh, to follow your exploits? You know, just Instagram, just Jason Mitchell Outdoors, or just look us up on Facebook. Follow us on YouTube. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can get a hold of us. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we're always – And you've got a great podcast as well. Yeah, absolutely. We've been doing a podcast, which has been a lot of fun. So thank you again, Jason Mitchell, for uh, joining us. And uh, let's move on to our next guest. You bet. Thanks for having me. Next up, we've got a great friend of mine, an all-year guide and fishing promoter, everybody's bro, Brian Brostall. Brian, how's it going today? Hey, good. How you doing, Dennis? I'm fantastic, and I'm, uh, I'm uh, wishing I was – out on the water and so it's got me thinking of fishing stories and fishing tales and and these moments that have happened in the past that just drives me and drives everybody to get back out there uh on the water to do it again with uh the opener happening everybody's chomping at the bit because they've got a memory they got a story in their head that's just driving them forward and i know brian i know you've got to have a good one oh yeah i mean where do you start i mean i've got crappie bluegill sturgeon stories but i do have a walleye story that was really makes me want to go out fishing for walleyes and this is something for the opener i had uh i've been guiding now i'm going on my 27th season and uh this wasn't that many years ago but i was on leech lake in uh the bait shop near near my house up in max uh they had a lot of minnows dying and so i usually get about 
three, four scoops of minnows. You don't want to run out of minnows even on a half day trip. And no. they, had, they had a bunch of extras. You want these dead ones? Sure. I'll, I'll take them. I'll, I'll use them myself <laughs> and give the clients the good ones. And these two older fellas, they're just happy if they can catch a dozen walleyes and went out there and um, we're getting fish and the weather changed. There was a, uh, a, a, a wall cloud in the distance, but it was still rather calm. Mm -hmm. And we weren't far from the dock and, uh, the fish just went nuts and we're on Leech Lake and Ooh. it's slow drift and the walleyes just followed the boat. It didn't matter where you went <laughs> in that, in this flat. Right. And, uh, you've been out there, you've seen me, uh, what? you've watched me from the boat. When I get on these spots, I think the fish actually just follow the boat, but we, I, we caught, uh, we were, we clicked off 62 walleyes on a half day trip. Whoa! Yeah. These people that say 40, 50, 60 walleyes all the time, it was chaos. I mean, and right. uh, you can leave your line dangling in the water halfway if you're netting a fish because they would take your rod over the side of the boat. The walleyes are rising up. If if when you pitch out your jig and minnow, they'd mm -hmm. hit it on the way down. It was it was just an amazing bite, and I haven't had anything like that quite like that since. Where. We literally ran out of bait. We were looking for tails and heads around the boat. Right. And uh, yep. I said, guys, I'm sorry I ran out of bait, but I had like hundreds of minnows today. <laughs> and then <laughs> if, if you throw plastics and you get some hits, it's not the same. We're in the glacial area where the walleye seem to like bump it and then they, they take it. And so, but their, their day was over. And I just remember that uh, it was amazing. We had a lot of 26, 27 inches and, we we can't, we went in before anything hit, and it wasn't that big of a deal. But when they go on that body of water, you're oh, only yeah. allowed one rod in Minnesota. Right. When they bite on Leech Lake, and you're getting to a school that's going nuts, uh, it's insane. And um, I I think about that all the time. Those guys are so happy. Now and, there, uh, we got go a little ahead. bit to unpack here. Um, you know, I, I I have some questions. All sure. right, so. Le so Leech Lake is a very wind-driven lake. With that wall, uh, that cloud wall coming in, was that uh, like sucking air into the system? And so you had some wind picking up. Well, the the pressure uh, was was uh, rising. And mm -hmm. I remember it was rising, and it was it was uh, twenty nine point uh, nine one. And then when I got up the water, it, uh, it it actually rose on the water. I know it did. And then and then it fell. And okay. the fish were just uh, crazy. And uh, uh, we thought we'd seen a few slashing on the surface. Uh, and it wasn't a mayfly time of the year. It was actually just before the mayflies. And uh, the wall, but you, we were in about 10 feet of water and it's mm -hmm. a wind driven lake. Um, and when the wind isn't blowing, uh, you, you can still get them. You just got to move around. We do a lot of jigging up here. And when summer comes, uh, we'll switch to rigs. Uh, bullet sinkers and just just light enough where you don't drag on the bottom. You want to pull through the weeds, right? Um, and and flip out a leech and and uh, or use a uh, gumdrop floater with a, a full leech on it. Uh, works really good. And these walleyes hang around on uh, algae algae grass, which is called cara, and it's a doesn't even have roots. It's it's mm -hmm. a, a pillowy grass that sits on top of the sand. Yeah, and just kind of moves around there. In the summertime, the crayfish come in, or are they're in their real heavy feeding on crayfish. This time of year, they're still hitting minnows. There's a lot of young of the year perch and uh, shiners, and just a dream bite. I mean, I've had, I've caught more fish on you know a fish in the Lake of the Woods or when I used to do tournaments up in Canada. Right. Uh, my tournament partner and I would bring our own nets because you'd net your own fish, and the only time your partner would net a fish as if it was one of those super giant ones. Right. And uh, we, we try to swing them in if we can. But but this is uh, good old Leech Lake, and there's so many big fish in that lake. It's mm -hmm. just a blast. And oh, yeah. the thing about it, it is, it is big water. I mean, if yep. you're out in the middle on the rocks, you could wish, you're, you, wish you were back on shore when the waves start driving down because even in a 21-foot a ranger boat, right, you're slapping, but the other people are just about breaking in half. And mm -hmm. uh, so – but it's not like Lake of the Woods. It, no. You don't need a, a surfboard. Right. <laughs> and and at, least, at least on Leech, you can usually find some place to fish uh, out of the wind if you need to. 
Oh, and you might have to switch it. species, but you, you can always oh, find a place. Well, that's why I said it was a hard decision to, about what to talk about. I, I will sneak a little story in, and this is another client that comes about the same time of year, and he loves crappies. Okay. And his dream is to catch a two-pound crappie and a 10-pound walleye. And uh, I took him out. Uh, on the day. same day, I, I take it? On the same day. And I'm okay. like, boy, you drive a hard bargain. And I can't always, <laughs> I can't do that stuff all the time. And Right. I try to concentrate just on walleyes, even though I, I love panfish and all this stuff. But, you know, I, I've had people, hey, I like walleyes. I like, oh, I like crappies. Oh, and mm -hmm. I like bluegills. And I like perch. And I'm like, oh, you want Noah's Ark? You know? <laughs> 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 you want the limit of everything for the Ark? Right. So uh, I try to just concentrate on walleyes, you know, because you can, you can be half good at something or really good at one thing, you know. Yes. And, uh, I used to guide for muskies. I had a long story, but anyway, this guy, we went out and, and uh, on our first pass, uh, he got his 10-6 walleye, so he got his, his trophy walleye, and then uh, he got a crappie over two pounds, like two pounds, two ounces, on a lake that they're normally small, and he got a couple of big hogs like that, so... Um, and this is somebody that could hardly keep from like laughing hysterical. I thought he went insane in the boat and, uh, it makes guiding so much fun when this stuff happens. And trust me, folks, it's, uh, you can't always guarantee anything. Uh, but it seems like when there's good karma in there, you, you just, you just, the fish bite and, um, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, but yeah, that's, I would say that that they, all those walleyes and the way they hit was amazing. Yeah. And now I'm telling you, that's why it's one of my favorite lakes, Leech Lake. Where can you go out and get, you know, great lakes like walleyes mm -hmm. without surfing? No planer boards involved. You pitch out a jig. Does it get right. simpler than that? No nope. lead attached to a hook. With a anybody can on. do it. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. And it's more fun. And, and if I get clients that aren't used to fishing, you can put a jig on their line, and right. they do really well, and they like it because they go, what do you do? Feel a bite, set the hook, and what if it's a rock? Well, hook sets are free. Come on. You know, you don't have to rip their face off or anything. <laughs> right, but right. It, it, and then I'll get every now and then, and, you know, guides could talk to you for hours and stories, but I always get the, the rods jerking really hard, and uh, they're like, how do you know it's biting? I said, that one's going to be gut hook. <laughs> that fish is digested right. on, your, on your jig right now. Yep. Um, or it stole your bait and it's gone. So it's, <laughs> it's fun. And, and, you know, and then, uh, but I, I, I gotta say those two old fellas and, oh, they, they were, they were, they, I think one had cancer and it just, just, uh, they were just ecstatic and it's a good feeling to oh, have. And someday I'll have to tell you about, uh, my fishing trip with, uh, I have, I've had trips with, uh, Alan Ron Linder. Oh, and, uh, uh, quick trips, but I'll, I'll tell right. you that in the next. I'll leave you hanging there. Okay, so for for next time, uh, so with the opener uh, coming up and what we just talked about, I'm guessing you're going to be throwing a jig and minnow this weekend. I will have a jig and minnow on all my rods, and <laughs> and <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, minnows we're going to have them. You know, it's uh, we're kind of in strange times. How many times have you heard strange times? But oh yeah, yeah. There, there's a really super bad flow out there, but uh, uh, so not everything's perfect. But give me some fatheads. Give me any kind of bait, mm -hmm. or give me a plastics. I'll go to lakes. Some lakes have a more of an affinity for plastics. I'll go to the lakes that have plastic, a plastic bite to them, or crawlers work. But it's not as fast as a jig. You can put it on a on a jig, but crawlers I like to pull them on rigs. You know, right. so you don't get a short bite, but, but yeah, that's what I'm going to do. But I better get back here. My crew's here helping me work on a dock and it was good talking to you. All right. Thanks again uh, for Brian. If uh, people want to follow your exploits or uh, uh, check out the products that uh, you are highly recommending, where do they go and do that? Well, you can go to uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, all the social media places, and you can follow my adventures there and uh, good luck fishing and get out fishing. It's keep your distance from my boat. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Social boat distancing. Social no, boat right. distancing. We've been practicing yeah. it forever. All right. Yeah. Uh, once again, Brian Brostel, thank you very much. That was a heck of a story.
All right, we'll talk to you later. Well, that's our show. I want to thank everybody for watching, and I really want to thank our guests, Larry Ledowski, Jason Mitchell, and Brian Brosdahl. Make sure you follow all three of them online. And if you like this show, please, please, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and give us a note in the comments on what you like and don't like. We want to make the best show for you. And if you've got a fish tail of your own or other ideas that you want to see on the Midwest Outdoors show, please let us know. Hey, I'm your host, Dennis LaPel. Make sure you tune in next time. We'll catch you later.